video, I'm going to show you four ways you can solo over Little Wing, from beginner to advanced, coming up. What's up guys, RJ Ron Kilio here. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, thanks for joining me. All right, this video is going to go beyond being just a Jimi Hendrix lesson video. I wanted to show you guys four levels of improvising a solo over his classic song, Little Wing. Even if you're not a fan of Hendrix or are unfamiliar with this tune, there are concepts and approaches I'm gonna show you that you can apply to almost any chord progression. So if you're interested in leveling up your knowledge of improvising and learning new ideas for soloing, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the whole video. But before we get started, if you're into these kinds of videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay notified of all my new videos and whenever I go live. Like I said before, this is not a Hendrix lesson per se, so I'm not gonna show you how to play his solo on Little Wing note for note. Instead, because the song itself is such a beautiful chord progression and a favorite of many guitarists to solo over, you know, it's almost become like a standard, like a jazz standard. Everyone seems to know it and musicians love to jam on it. So because of that, I wanted to show you four ways of approaching an improvised solo from the most basic beginner to some really fun advanced concepts. I should mention while this is a pretty thorough lesson video, I do have a more in-depth version of this lesson with some extra content and bonus tips. It's about 45 minutes long. I've also included a link to download the Little Wing backing track that I'm using in this video. I've made this available on my Patreon page and if you'd like to become a patron to access this director's cut, if you will, as well as some other cool perks like more tabs and backing tracks, I'll put a link down in the description. Now back to the lesson. All right, so if you're not familiar with the chords to Little Wing, uh, it's basically in the key of G major. Now on the original recording, uh, the band was tuned down a half step, but for the purposes of this lesson video, I'm gonna teach it to you in standard tuning. Okay, starting with level one, the most basic way to play over this song is using a first position uh, E minor pentatonic scale. And most of us know this first position pentatonic uh, scale shapes. I could do it at the 12th fret. Or I could maybe do it on open, open position. And this is where most of us start to learn how to play over this song, and rightfully so, because the majority of Jimi Hendrix's original solo is based around the E minor pentatonic, as well as Stevie Ray Vaughan's version. So I'm gonna show you an example of how to play an entire solo just using the first position E minor pentatonic. Now the key to, to using this basic level is trying to be melodic and conscious of our phrasing and what we're playing, and not just play a flurry of pentatonic blues lick. It's okay to play less and take breaths here and there. Let me show you an example. From here, if you want to level up, the next logical step would be to expand to different positions of this E minor pentatonic. We've got our first position E minor pentatonic uh, he right here in open position. Position two would be that. Now I'm not gonna teach you every single pentatonic position. There's tons and tons of videos on YouTube for that. Trick for me is knowing exactly where the root is. So I need to know where my E root notes are. So uh, in position two, so I've got my root note there. And I've 
Ranga Maru note there. So th these act as like mental anchors for me. So I know exactly, you know, where the shapes of these uh, pentatonic positions start and stop and what they look like and how they stem from these root notes. So position three would start here. There's my root note. There's my other root note. And a lot of times, you know, I'm using my ear more than I'm using my my knowledge of, okay, this is what the shape looks like. I'm using more of my ear and, and getting the, the sound of these scales in your ear is more important than memorizing uh, patterns. So knowing all these different positions really helps you gain facility up and down the neck and also opens up you know, different patterns that you might not have if you were limiting yourself to just this one position. Okay, moving on to level two. Level two is similar to level one where we're sticking with one scale for the entire uh, chord progression. We're going to play a G major scale or E minor scale. Uh, because we are now transitioning from pentatonic playing to basically modal playing, you know, a five note scale to a seven note scale, even though it's just two extra notes, it really does open up a new world of melodies and ideas. And for the purposes of simplicity, I'm gonna explain from the G major point of view instead of E minor. You know, it's the same notes, essentially, G major scale and E minor scale, but I find it easier to talk about it uh, in terms of G major. If you know a simple major scale anywhere on the neck, like down here, or, you can work in this level with that knowledge. Now this scale will work over most of the song. At the end of the progression, we have this G to F movement. Uh, when we get there, I'll show you some tricks uh, to get around that part of the song. But right now I'm gonna show you an example of playing just one octave of a G major scale. So I'm just gonna play that major scale for this whole entire uh, chord progression. Hopefully you heard that I was able to come up with uh, cooler lines, a little more melodic, a little more jazzy, if you will. Hopefully you also noticed that when we got to the end of the chord progression and I was at that F chord, I was kind of cautious of what I was playing. The F chord is technically not correct in the key of G major. So if we look at the G major scale that I just played, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, back to G. So the, uh, the major scale has this F sharp note, the major seventh note. F is not in the key of G major. We have an F sharp in the scale, right? And that clashes big time over the F chord. Here's an F sharp. Not good, right? Now we have two choices here. We can avoid playing that F sharp note altogether by playing, you know, almost like a hybrid major scale kind of pentatonic thing. Just don't play that F sharp, right? Or we could play the F note instead of the F sharp, which would turn our G major scale 
into a G mixolydian scale. Now, without going heavily into modes and theory, just know that the difference between a major scale and a mixolydian scale is that one note, this seventh degree. So when we get to that F chord, we can temporarily change the scale from G major to G mixolydian just for those two beats. Let me show you an example. And back to G major, uh, scale for the C into the D for the end of the tune. So like the level one pentatonic example, the next logical stage would be playing the G major scale in different positions. Let me show you an example of just playing a G major scale over the entire chord progression, keeping in mind when I get to that F chord, I'm going to turn it into a G mixolydian scale. Okay, moving on to level three. Now for level three, we're going back to the pentatonic scale, but this time we're gonna play a pentatonic scale over each chord, and it might be different depending on the chord. If you recall in level one, we just stuck with E minor pentatonic for the entire chord progression. This time we are going to be switching it up. We might be playing E minor pentatonic, we might be playing A minor pentatonic, we might be playing B minor pentatonic. This is where it gets really fun. We're starting to delve into jazz territory, jazz concepts, but we can still make it sound rock and roll. And the general rule is over a minor chord, we're going to play the minor pentatonic of that chord. So over an E minor chord, we're gonna play an E minor pentatonic. When we get to the A minor chord, we're gonna play A minor pentatonic and so on and so forth. And over a major chord, we're going to play a major pentatonic. Now, if you're not versed in your major pentatonics, the hard and fast rule is wherever your major chord root note is, play a minor pentatonic three frets down from that. For instance, on the G major chord, three frets down, one, two, three, and play A minor pentatonic. So, so E minor pentatonic works over G major. Let's say when we get to the end, when we're at the D chord, three frets down from that, one, two, three, then we play A minor pentatonic, which is our B minor pentatonic, but it works over D major. So kind of just running through the whole chord progression. E minor to G major. We can stay with just an E minor pentatonic. We're anywhere on the neck, right? So the first two chords were cool. We can stick with one scale. When we get to the A minor chord, now we can play our A minor pentatonic. Back to E minor. And I'm just showing you uh, these examples with just this simple first position pentatonic. When we go up to B minor, we can make use of the B minor pentatonic scale. And then slide down to the A minor. Now here, this section is kind of cool. A lot of people will play this uh, B flat passing note between the B minor chord and the A minor chord. So the rhythm might be like. And the cool thing about that, especially when we're making use of this pentatonic concept, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll play a pattern using B minor pentatonic, something simple like that. And then I'll shift it down a half step and play that same pattern when I get to the A minor. So um, I'll show you a better example when I'm playing over the chord progression, but that's a little trick that a lot of players do, that little half step movement. movement. So, uh, so we're on this A minor chord, right? 
A minor to C is kind of the same relationship that we had at the beginning, E minor to G. So A minor pentatonic will work over the A minor chord as well as the C, as well as the C major chord. For this uh, chord progression, the G, F, C, D, this is a lot of shifting, but according to our rule, we would play a G major pentatonic, an F major pentatonic, C major pentatonic, and a D major pentatonic. So four different scales, but that last section of the chord progression, E minor pentatonic, uh, D minor pentatonic, Um, and then we're gonna shift down to this A minor pentatonic for the C chord. And then shift up two frets for this uh, B minor pentatonic, which, which works over the D chord. So let me show you an example of, of playing these pentatonic scales over this chord progression. To keep it simple, I will play it all in these first position pentatonic shapes so you can see. Going back to that part in the chord progression where we're going B minor and doing this little half step movement, I will play certain um, patterns and just mirror them against that B flat minor to the A, A minor. So let me show you an example of ways to phrase things uh, in that section. That's a really cool device to use in your solos. It's kind of got this call and response thing or just kind of this you know, mirror image of this pattern, but you're playing it in different keys over different chords. So that's fun to do. And like all the other levels, the next logical step would be to break out of that first position pattern playing. And a cool exercise for that, once you get a grasp of where all your pentatonics are, is staying in one position and, and just playing all of your pentatonics, whether you're an E minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, B minor, stick, sticking in one position. So let me show you an example of that. Playing in just the seventh position, seventh fret. All right, so let's start it with E minor pentatonic. A minor pentatonic. Back to E minor, B minor, okay, that was kind of tough but it is an excellent exercise. Congratulations, you've made it to level four, the final level, the boss level. I wanna talk about playing the changes, but focusing on the chord tones using structures like triads and arpeggios. So a quick theory lesson, a chord, if we're talking about a simple major or minor chord, is made up of a triad or three chord tones. You know, root, third, fifth. Arpeggios are basically triads strung together. So if I were to play two G major triads in a row, that's a G major arpeggio. 
So for this level, I want to focus on the chord tones for each chord, and that would mean knowing the triads and arpeggios for the chords. So let me try to take a solo just playing these simple triad shapes over the chords. So that wasn't my greatest solo, but it was somewhat melodic. I could f tell that I could find some really cool places to form melodies. You know, having these the spread of notes, these triads, is a little bit of a different way to approach as opposed to that linear scalar type of way of playing. So moving on from that, we can expand from just playing triads to playing <clears throat> full arpeggios. If I wanted to stay in one position, much like the uh, thing that we did in level three, this is an excellent exercise as well. I'll do the same thing that I did last time where I'm sticking around the seventh position. You know, the trick to phrasing with this concept is visualizing these shapes of triads and patterns of arpeggios. Uh, a really good exercise for this, other than staying in one position, is try playing just quarter notes and really think about connecting the chords. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just gonna play a solo comprised of just quarter notes and I'm gonna try to, you know, play all the chord tones using triads and arpeggios and connect them in a logical way when I switch uh, chords. You get the idea, it makes a really great exercise and gets your brain working. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson video. Like I said at the beginning, you can try to apply these four concepts over other songs that might have multiple chord changes as well. All right guys, thanks again for watching this lesson. If you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, gear demos or tone tutorials, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.